What's good, y'all? This is JTV coming at y'all with another segment on our channel where we'll be displaying and giving you knowledge on our black greats. Welcome to our story, not his story. The first great on our segment is Dr. George Grant. Dr. Grant was born in Oswego, New York in 1847. As a child, he worked for his hometown dentist office as an errand boy and then eventually moved up to be a lab assistant. At the age of 19, he felt Oswego had nothing to offer him, so he headed for Boston, but didn't have quite enough money yet. So he had to go find work again as a dental assistant, but two years later, earned a spot in the new Harvard Dental School. In 1870, George graduated with honors, becoming the second African-American graduate of the dental school. Dr. Grant got hired by the dental school upon graduation. He stayed there for four years where he specialized in working with patients with effects on the roof of their mouth. George formed individual inserts for those with cleft palates, which greatly helped those suffering with speaking and eating. Although he is an outstanding dentist and is known internationally for his practice, his hobby and passion was golf. Although Dr. Grant was an avid golfer, they said his skill was at question. While golfing, Dr. Grant was starting to become really frustrated with the tee shot. The process of teeing back then was to go get some wet sand, scoop it up so the ball could fit, and then just swing away. And doing that 18 times around, I bet got real annoying. So I'm guessing, one day, while Dr. Grant was just sitting at home, after a rough game on the course, he decided he was going to do something about this. So on December 12, 1899, he came up with the invention that will change the sport of golf forever. I think y'all know where I'm going with this. Yes, the world's first golf tee and was awarded a U.S. patent for it. I know y'all thinking, man, he had to make millions, right? I feel you, but let's be real. Golfing is quoted being the game for the rich. So wouldn't it make sense for Dr. Grant to be rich? But the truth is, he didn't even market the invention. Dr. Grant just had to manufacture locally and just gave them away to his friends and his golfing buddies. It was clear he just wanted to make the game of golfing easier for him and his friends. His daughter said she remembered playing with tees as a child that many were left in Boston when Dr. Grant died of liver cancer in 1910. Although his invention reached a small amount of people, he was never recognized for it until several decades later. Man, don't this sound familiar. Another dentist named Dr. William Lowell from Maplewood, New Jersey popularized the tea in 1921 when he manufactured the Ready Tea. In 1991, damn near a century later after his patent, the United States Golf Association finally gave Grant the recognition for his major contribution to the game of golf. Although he finally got the recognition he deserved, I don't even think he wanted the recognition. I just think he would want to be known as an inventor that enhanced the game and made the sport of golf easier for everyone to play. Well, on this channel, we ever recognize you Dr. Grant for what you did as a dentist and as an inventor and won't let another decade go by without you being recognized this is our story not his story thanks for watching y'all please like and subscribe peace love and blast